Greetings, friends, and welcome back. We are here at December 15th for our video podcast. As always, here with uh, my Robin, since I'm Batman. <laughs> <laughs> now, what am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> so, we're here, and uh, we're going to be talking this week about, uh, about some, lies. About lies and <laughs> fascinating conversation, uh, Bat- uh, Robin. <laughs> About um, so you can't even say it with a straight face. <laughs> That's right. I'm, I'm no superhero, and you're no superhero. Oh, either. I may be. You just don't know. <laughs> Batman. <laughs> so we're um, we're going to be talking today about the fascinating contrast in the Gospel of Luke between some of the characters, and today really focusing our conversation around Zechariah and Mary. And Steve, I we were talking earlier, and I'm fascinated by this character by the name of Zechariah, who is a priest from the, uh, a particular line of priests, and his finding out from the angel that he's going to have a child, and then Mary has a child, and, and kind of compare, contrast those conversations. Tell me a little bit about what you know about Zechariah and, and his finding out about that he's going to be... <laughs> He's going well, to be bringing this child into the world. Well, one thing, he was uh, up there in age. Yeah. He, his wife was <laughs> well beyond the years of bearing a child. And so his first reaction to hearing an angel, and you would think if an angel shows up, first, let's, you're a priest, uh, uh, and he should know the Old Testament stories that miraculous births are part of the story. And especially when you think about Abraham and Sarah, uh, it became Ab- Abraham and Sarah, the, she gives birth to the child of the promise at a very old age. So, but so all that would have been in his knowledge base, but yet when this angel shows up and he experiences something that, that isn't theoretical anymore, something that's real right in front of him, he has a hard time believing it. Even the even the angel is named. It's the angel Gabriel, and the archangel, the angel who says, "Look, I'm standing in the presence of God every day, and I've come to give you this word." And and, and that's something just as an aside that the word angel actually means messenger. Means messenger. Uh, and and so this is Gabriel's task. He has come as a emissary, a direct connection to God Almighty. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. <laughs> right. And it, it's, uh, right, yeah, as you said, from the throne room of God to Zechariah's presence, and Zechariah's like, say what? So as you read in the first chapter of the Gospel of Luke, you read this, it really begins with the story of uh, Zechariah and Elizabeth. And Zechariah, a priest who is doing his duty uh, in the temple, it's his. He's drawn by lights. It just happens to be his time to be there. He he's actually been praying to God for this child, and uh, the angel says, Zechariah, your prayer is going to be answered. And and Zechariah still has a hard time receiving that news because of the advanced age of his wife Elizabeth and the fact that they haven't been able to have a child. And when the angel says, Hey, your your prayer has been answered, and you're going to have this child. Zechariah's response is, how will I know that this is so? And that seems to really not go over well with no. the angel, Gabriel. No. Gabriel, um, first of all, I mean, it is a little bit like, and, and I get it. I mean, the human piece of Zechariah is like, so you're going to have to prove it to me. Yeah. And, and Gabriel's like, I don't have to prove anything to you, buddy. <laughs> and, and then... That's a paraphrase. And so the then Zechariah... Uh, walks out of the temple uh, and is unable to speak. The angel says, you're you're not going to be able to even speak about this. Well, and here's the response, right? I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. But now, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time, you will become mute, unable to speak until the day these things occur. And so he walks out. The people are looking at him like, what's going on, Zechariah? He, he asked for a pad and he, he, he can't speak. Finally, it gets down and then the, the day comes when Elizabeth bears this child. They have to give him a pad. What's the name of this child going to be? Is it Zechariah Jr.? And he writes down, well, I was told it's John. This baby's name is John. Well, yeah, right. I mean, it's like, and then you look over on Luke 1, 59, uh, 
On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child and they were going to name him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said, no, he's, he is to be called John. And they said to her, none of your relatives has this name. It, it's interesting. Even in the first century, people were giving each other junk about what they named their kids. Yeah. Then they began motioning to his father to find out what his name he wanted to give to him. Uh, it's interesting. They motioned to him. Zechariah is the one who couldn't speak. He could hear. Right. <laughs> I, don't know, I think that's kind of humorous. He asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. And all of them were amazed. So I wanted to compare and contrast this with you today, Steve. Compare and contrast what the angel then says to this young, probably 14, 15 year old young, young woman by the name of Mary, who is also visited by an angel. And the angel says, in some very similar ways, uh, Mary, you're going to have a baby. Right. And this is Mary's response after being told that you're going to be giving birth to this child. You're a virgin, but it's still going to happen. It's the child of the Holy Spirit. Mary asked the question and says, how can this be since I am a virgin? Now, I, I, don't, I know it sounds like I'm defending Zechariah, but I do think it's fascinating that Zechariah says, how will I know that this is so? Mary says, how can this be since I'm a virgin? Zechariah is determined and deemed to be unwilling to, to mm. believe God. Mary, as we go on and finally at the end of uh, when she, we get to the last part of, close to the last part of chapter 1, Elizabeth says, and blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. That's what Elizabeth says to Mary. Uh. Yeah, and it's hard to judge the inflection from just having the words. None of us were there. Right. None of us got to see exactly what happened. And it's, but my, my guess is that Mary's is, question comes out of wonder, not out of doubt necessarily. Does that, does that make sense? I think, I think Zechariah's, and Zechariah should have known better. Right. I mean, I think one he's, of the key he's a priest. Is, he studied yeah. scripture all he's an his insider. life. Right. He should have known. It's also going to be one of the themes that rolls throughout Luke's gospel is that the insiders don't get it. The outsiders do. And certainly God looks on the heart and God would have known the difference between Zechariah's question and Mary's question. But I think it's a fascinating thing to think about how Zechariah would have been steeped in the traditions. He would have known the scriptures. He, he, would have, he is in the very presence of the Lord in the temple. But uh, Yeah, and I think, though, that almost like Zechariah's doubt expresses a level of cynicism. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I've, I've lived a long time, and yeah. Well, We've been down this path before, right. the path of, of disillusionment and disappointment, right. wanted a child all these times. And Mary, again, she had not studied the script. She has not studied the ancient text. I mean, hopefully she was aware of them in her upbringing, but she didn't spend her whole day just reading the scriptures. She didn't spend her time discussing the scriptures. She would have been doing what any 14-year-old girl of that time would have been doing, chores and uh, growing up. And she had, hers is, I mean, so I think there's a little bit of a difference there. But ultimately, I think hers does come out of this. Now, how can it be? Is it's all about the inflection? It's all about the heart. And her question is, "Wow, how how can this be?" Versus, "Oh, uh, how can this be?" It, I, I believe that's a differentiation between the two. Well, one of the fascinating things that I think we consistently struggle with as we read these texts that we often come to only around Christmas is to see how that they are a part of the bigger picture of Luke's gospel and always calling us to think about the broader themes that especially the gospel of Luke pounds over and over and over. And one of the things we also fall prey to this time of year is only reading what shows up on the Christmas card. Right. And we don't read the whole story. Uh, maybe you're like, Zechariah? Who's Zechariah? I didn't know Zechariah was part of the Christmas story. Well, ultimately he is. But he doesn't make many Christmas cards. Yeah. Uh, we get the, you know, we get the familiar words that come from um, certain places of the scripture. So it is important that take a little time, read through the entirety of these chapters, not just bits and pieces. 
And, and I think a broader question for us is, do we have such a, a struggle in believing the Word of the Lord? And we are given so many promises in this book, so many promises and, that God can bring peace even to the crazy lives that we're living. And, and do we look at the world with hope or cynicism? Yeah. Do we look at it with wonder or do we look at it with doubt? Yeah. Uh, that make, can make the whole, that can make a huge difference in your life if you wake up every morning and you approach everything with cynicism, doubt, and disillusionment, or if you wake up in the morning and you look at things with hope and anticipation of what God will do. And how many of us who are privileged and privy to this book, and we are steeped in its traditions and we know its words, and yet we still fight that battle mm -hmm. of cynicism, doubt, and despair. I just want to invite you to think today that just like Zechariah years ago, just like Mary years ago, when God makes promises, they come true, and we can put our lives on them, and we, our lives can be light, our lives of, of joy and, and blessing mm. rather than cynicism, doubt, and despair. And so today, maybe we can all grapple with this notion and, and find ourselves a little bit like Zechariah, but more like Mary. Yeah, hopefully we can end up there and stay away from the, the doubt and the almost the arrogance that Zechariah had mm -hmm. and step into the wonder and joy that Mary had. So thank you for, for joining us today. Tomorrow we're going to get into a visit from Zechariah's wife, Elizabeth, and uh, this young girl, Mary, who comes to visit after she, fi after she finds out her own news. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. All right. Thank you.